Chaksurun militanye na tasmai shri gurave namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadarha Shri Vasate Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So we're speaking on the final section of the Brihad Bhagavatamrita and we, we had heard how Gop Kumar, a cowherd boy from Govardhan, had gone to the spiritual world. So this uh, whole narration was spoken by a great sage called Jaimini and he was speaking to the son of Maharaj Parikshit named Janman Jaya. Maharaj Parikshit had already departed from the world after being bitten by the snake bird and after going before well first he went into samadhi and when he was in samadhi he was bitten by the snake bird. Maharaj Parikshid had samadhi so Jaimini is telling the son of Maharaj Parikshit, he's telling him that your father, before he left the world, he spoke about the glories of Goloka. Jaimini and he spoke some different slokas which describe the main, the, which describe the different ecstasies which the devotees feel. And the, some of the verses which, we, which he spoke were, they were the main purports of all the scriptures. So by, by speaking these verses, then I, I'm able to overcome the pain in my heart because of the absence of your father because Maharaj Parikshit had left the world. And by remembering these verses, I can travel happily in the world. Yeah, 
So he said, now I'm going to begin to tell you some, tell you these verses. So he spoke a few, he's going to speak a few verses from the Brahma Samhita, which glorify Goloka. And then there's, then there's a few verses also from the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. Which tells about the, the glory, the greatness of the people of Vrindavan. Right, so here's the first verse which comes from the Brahma Samhita. Ananda Chinmaya Visa Pratibha Vitabhi Tabir Yaiva Nicharupa Kaya Kalabhi Goloka Eva Nivasati Akilatma Bhutto Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajamin. So Lord Brahma prays how he worships Govinda, the, the primeval Lord. Yeah. Because Govinda lives in everyone's heart as the super soul. And at the same time, he lives in Goloka. And in Goloka, he lives with Radha, who is his own, who, who, he lives with Radha, who is his pleasure potency. And with them, they have all of Radharani's companions who are like extensions of her body. And they all have spiritual bodies full of eternal knowledge and bliss. So Lord Brahma is telling us about the wonderful position of Lord Krishna or Govinda and all of his associates and everything in the spiritual world in Goloka. So, uh, this verse also tells us how Krishna has, is very skillful in enchanting people, that people become very attracted to him. Because of his wonderful qualities and his beauty, he attracts so many people. So the devotees who are all expansions of Krishna are the gopis and the, and the cowherd boys and they're all, they all have that pure love for Krishna. So they're very similar to Krishna in form. And they, 
they have so much bhakti that they're able to, uh, they, 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 they want to serve Krishna in all these all the different ways. So because Krishna is the super soul in everyone, he witnesses everything and he knows about everything everyone's doing. But at the same time, he's living eternally in Goloka and he's enjoying with his devotees there. And he's the source of all the avatars and he's greater than than uh, Vishnu, the Lord of Vaikuntha. And so Brahma, he speaks as if Govinda lives in a faraway place, as if it's almost impossible for us, for, for him, even Brahma, to see him. Then there's another verse from Brahma Samhita, Golokanam ni Golokanam ni tale chatashya Devi Mahesha Hari Dama Shute Shute Shu Te Te Prabhava Nichaya Vihitas Chayena Govindam Adipursam Tamaham Bajamin. So this verse is describing about different planets, one planet, different planets, some planets are higher than others. So the bottom, the lowest of all the planets is called Devi Dam, and that's the mundane world, that's where we are. And then above that is the, the abode of Lord Shiva, which is called Mahesh Dam. And above, above the place of Lord Shiva is the abode of Hari, it's called Hari Dam. And above that is the supreme abode of Lord Krishna, Goloka. So below the below Krishna's planet, there's many many different other worlds or planets, and there the. Lord Narayan is residing there. He, he's over. He's over, He's in charge of all of these planets, the local Loka planet. It's Vaikuntha, and Lord Narayan's in charge there. Yes, and there's all, yeah, go ahead. And there's also there's a Vaikuntha planet which is in, in the material world, and Lord Narayan is also overseeing that. Mm. 
that place is called Mahakalapura and it's the place of liberation. And then in the, the whole material world is all under the control of Devi and she's the, the deity of the material world. And she also, uh, she, she also, she's the deity of the eighth layer. There's different coverings over the universe, and the eighth covering is the unmanifested material nature. So she's she presides she presides she she's in charge of that. So Krishna's and there's many different energies which come from Lord Hari and he's the source of all different varieties of energy. And Govinda, Go, Lord Govinda, he expands himself as Narayan and as Shiva and as Devi. And these people, Narayan, Shiva and Devi, they create their worlds. And so the most wonderful world is the world of Goloka, which is created by Krishna. All right. But then there's another verse from Brahma Samhita. Shriya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kaupataravo Druma Bumis Chintamani Kanamai Toyam Amritam Kataganam Natyam Gananam Apivamsi Priyasati Chidanandam Jyoti pa <coughs> Parama Mapita Asvadyam Apicha Sayatra Shri Rabi Sarati Surabi Bhyas Chasumahan Nemeshradakayo Vabrajati Nahi Atrapi Samaya Bhaje Svetad Vidvam Tamaham Iha Golokamitiyam Vidantaste Santa Sati Virala Chala Katipaye So Lord Brahma is praying here. He's describing the world known as Sweta Dweep, where, where the, all the Lakshmis reside, along with the Supreme Lord Krishna. This Sweta Dweep is not the same as the Sweta Dweep in the material world. It said, in this place, every tree is a desire fulfilling tree. And all the the ground, the earth, is all made of gems which f fulfill all desires. And 
And all the water is nectar. Every word is a song, every step is a dance. And the flute is the favorite of all the devotees. And everyone is effulgent and full of transcendental bliss. And they're able and they're tasting and enjoying nectar all the time. And there are cows everywhere, and these cows are giving oceans of milk. And there's no influence of time, there's no past or future. So that place is called Goloka, and only a very few self-realized souls are able to go there. So Brahma, Lord Brahma gave the name of Sweta Dweep to this Goloka. But he described all the wonderful qualities of Goloka. All the girlfriends of Krishna in Goloka, they're all goddesses of fortune. They're, 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 not, they're not, not less than Mahalakshmi, the consort of Lord Narayan. All of the gurus. And in Goloka, the supreme enjoyer is not Narayan, but he is Krishna or Govinda. So, even the husbands of the gopis, the husbands of the gopis, they are all fully surrendered devotees of Krishna. So in Goloka there's very, there's perfect consciousness and there's full bliss and it's experienced by all the people, all the inhabitants. So all the cows of Goloka, they're all Surabi cows or Kamadenu cows, and they flood the, the land. All the, the milk is going everywhere on the land. Mm. 
庙里的母牛被称为苏拉比母牛，它们都是，它们得努，如无量乳牛，它们产出的牛奶淹没了整个大地。And there's no influence of time at all. There's not even a moment of time. 那里没有时间的影响，片刻也没有时间的影响。There, there, there, may, there appears to be events. There appears to be like you know one thing after, but it's all arranged just for the pleasure of Krishna, and for his pastimes. There, there's no birth there, there's no change, and there's no fear, there's no destruction. So in the material world, there's Sweta Dweep, it's in the ocean of milk, in the material universe. But this sweated weep is different. This sweated weep, this is the higher, the highest sweated weep, and it's very rare that people know about it or can even go there. And, and the people who are there, people, the, the few people who go there, they, they, they don't give their association, they don't tell materialistic people about it. So in Sweta Dweep, in the milk ocean, which means in the material world, Krishna also appears there. But not all the women there are goddesses of fortune. So in that place, he's not the only male. There, there are other men there, and his flute. In, in that place also, he, he doesn't have his flute with him. And Sweta Dweep in the material world is surrounded by an ocean of milk, but that ocean was not created from cow's milk. So, all these special features can be, it's only in Goloka you can see them, which is way above, this Goloka, the Sweta Dweep is way above Vaikunta. So, the word Sweta, Sweta means white. So it's very pure, and it's also mean, it's, it means it's also it's covered with milk of Krishna's cows.
and it's called Dweep. Dweep means an island. So it's an island because it is, it's like separate from all the other places. And it's also a very, very quiet place. It's a shelter where the pure souls like Nanda Maharaj can come and stay. So just like Mathura, Mathura on earth, Goloka is shaped like Mathura on earth, it's, it's like a, a round island. And just like Mathura on the shore is the island, that they have the river Yamuna. It's the border, like, of the end of the island, you have the Yamuna River. And so the same way with Goloka. So the whole Goloka the whole Goloka is like an island floating in the middle of an ocean of milk. And Mathura in the spiritual world is like the milk ocean, it has milk everywhere. Because the cows are everywhere, so everywhere there's milk. And within that place, within the region of Mathura, there is Vrindavan, which is like the white island, sweet that we. Yeah, and this in this place Nanda Maharaj lives and he has cows the grazing there and the whole ground is all covered with their milk. So we should understand how the, how this place of Vrindavan is very pious because it's there that Krishna comes and he disguises himself to be like an ordinary person and he wanders around and performs his pastimes. And he, he's wearing many wonderful, <coughs> he's wearing forest garlands. He made the, diff, the devotees and made different garlands for him from the flowers in the forest. And so Krishna's wearing these garlands. And as he walks through the forest, he plays his flute and he takes care of the, all the cows and he's in the company of Balaram. And his feet, his lotus feet are worshipped by people like Lord Shiva and Rama, the goddess of fortune. 
的莲花族被西本和拉玛这样的性女神所崇拜。So this, we, we're going to hear now about the glories of Vrindavan and the people who live in Vrindavan. And we're hearing about, we just heard about how the women of Mathura speak about Krishna. Krishna had just come to Mathura from Vrindavan. So early that morning, he killed the elephant Kuvala Yapida. And now all the women are watching him. Krishna 刚刚来。So now the women are watching Krishna wrestling with Chanura. And they're shocked. They think it's not a fair competition because these wrestlers are big and powerful and Krishna and Balaram are just little boys. And so the women, they, they say, this is not fair. It's like watching a fight between the strong and the weak. So how do the weak have any opportunity? They don't have a fair chance. Yeah, so the, the women, they say that Vrindavan is a pious place, but this, uh, but this wrestling match, this is not fair, this is not uh, proper. But Vrindavan and all the people who live in Vrindavan, even the, 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 the stones and the pieces of wood, even these things, they're all very special because they're from Vrindavan. And Krishna wanders everywhere, enjoying his pastimes, and he, he's giving pleasure to all the people of Vrindavan. But now they've arranged this wrestling match for Krishna and it's not fair. That how does Krishna have any fair chance? Because he's just a boy and these wrestlers are big and so powerful. <laughs> So the, the people of Vrindavan, they're very good, they're very pious, 
but we can understand the residents of this city, Mathura, that they're not, they're not pious at all. So when the women of Mathura were talking, they didn't, they wouldn't say the name of Krishna because they considered him to be like their own husband and a chaste woman will never say the name of her husband. And they also were afraid that if they were to say his name out loud, they might become ecstatic and lose control of themselves. So, so the, these women, they're con condemning the Mathura, that they've arranged this unfair match. But at the same time, they also know that the great sage Garga had predicted that Krishna would become the master of Mathura. So the people of Mathura are going to become very fortunate when Krishna becomes their ruler. But the still the ladies of Mathura but they say, no, Vrindavan is the only really pious place. So Krishna is understood by many people in different ways. Some people know Krishna as the super soul and other people like Lord Shiva and Mahalakshmi, they're worshipping Krishna's lotus feet. But in Vrindavan, Krishna disguises himself to look like an ordinary person. And this way then he can cheat Kamsa, he can hide himself and he can enjoy his pastimes with his devotees. And Krishna likes to wear many different garlands from forest flowers and he's with Balaram and many, many friends. And in this way, Krishna takes care of the cows and plays the flute. But the people of Mathura, they think of Krishna in different ways. There's they, because they've got a lot of knowledge of scriptures, so they think of Krishna as being uh, as being the personality of Godhead, and they think of Krishna in 
they're not able to think of Krishna in the same intimate way as the people of Vrindavan. So these people, they don't feel any need to have him present before him. They, they, they see these people in Mathura, they think of Krishna with four arms and all the opulence of the of God. So they cannot experience the same love as the people of Vrindavan feel for Krishna. People of Vrindavan cannot tolerate, not if they can't see Krishna for even a moment, it's unbearable for them. The people of Vrindavan, they see Krishna in the in its human-like form, and they and they they're always thinking of him. They think of him as the son of Nanda Maharaj and Yasoda, and they feel so much attachment to him. So they feel Krishna, their, their lives, the people of Vrindavan, their lives depend on Krishna. They're, without Krishna, their life has no meaning. They'll give up their life. And the place where they live, Vrindavan, that is the most fortunate of all places. Now the people of Mathura, the, and, and among the people of Mathura, there are people called the Yadavas, and the Yadavas are also great devotees, and they also have love of Krishna. But when Krishna is with them, Krishna will not wear all the flower garlands which he does in Vrindavan. And even if sometimes he may be given a forest, a flower, a garland of forest flowers, in the city of Mathura, you will never see Krishna taking care of the cows there. But even if he has a herd of cows, even if uh, somehow he, he is the king of Mathura, he may have some special cows, and sometimes he may take care of them, but he's up, ha, when he's in Mathura,
When he said, Mathura, how can he be with Balaram? Because often one of them, either Krishna or Balaram, they will have to go somewhere, they have to go and do their duties, they have to go and see what's happening, they have to leave the place, they have to go. So they're not often, very rare, they're together. And in Mathur, in Mathura, Krishna can can play. How he, he cannot play with the cowherd boys. Even sometimes the yadus they may dress up as cowherd boys to imitate Krishna's friends in Vrindavan. But even then, it's not like in Vrindavan because Krishna will not play his flute. And even, and also Krishna's special pastime in Vrindavan is Rasa Leela, so there's no way he could ever do that in Mathura. Actually, the ladies of Mathura, they just spoke about, they just described it as Krishna's pastime, special, playful pastime, but they didn't mention the Rasa Leela in name because they're very shy. And when Krishna held up Govardhan Hill, Srimati Radharani was uh, she, she, she was, she didn't have to worry about Krishna dropping the mill, the hill. Or she, she didn't have to worry about Krishna getting tired. She just kept Krishna happy by always looking at Krishna and smiling at him. When Krishna was in the and so she stayed by his side and so Krishna was very careful to hold the mountain up, not to drop it. So Radharani, so Radharani gave pleasure to that, to Krishna at that time. Uh, and so she worships Krishna's feet in Vrindavan. So Vrindavan is the most pious. It's only in Vrindavan that these things happen, cannot happen any other place. So, 
And that, and that Vrindavan is not different from Goloka. So Parikshit Maharaj, he got this this very high level of love of Krishna because he was hearing the mood of these people, the ladies of Mathura. And so he spoke about he spoke their words and he was appreciating the the, the, the words spoken by these ladies of Mathura. So the ladies of Mathura are saying, how fortunate are the cows and the ladies of Vrindavan? Because they know Krishna, he took the form of the cow of the calves and he took the form of their children. So in this way Krishna was able to drink the milk from he was able to drink the milk of the udder of the cow because he was a young calf and he was able to drink the breast milk of the ladies of Vrindavan because he came in the form of their sons. So even all the Vedic sacrifices which have been performed since the beginning of time, they have not given you as much pleasure and as much satisfaction as you got from this pastime. So, Lord, this is Lord Brahma's prayer to Krishna in Vrindavan, actually. And Brahma had seen the mercy of Krishna and he had, he had seen how Krishna is so powerful. And he saw how Krishna, after Brahma had stolen all the cows and the cowherd boys, how Krishna expanded himself and he became all the calves and all the cowherd boys. So Lord Brahma has understood that the best way he can praise Krishna is to describe the great the greatness of Krishna's devotees and also the greatness of devotional service. So from the beginning of Brahma's life he'd been praying to Krishna to get pure devotion, to get the, he considered it to be the most important thing in his life. Uh, 
how Brahma considers now he's seen Krishna in Vrindavan and he's seen how great these people of Vrindavan are. Now he considers that he's been he's the most fortunate. Brahma so Brahma hopes that he can get the same kind of devotion which the people of Vrindavan have. And he said they're the most fortunate devotees. Okay, we will stop here. Are there any questions? Yes. Obeisance to Guru, uh, can I wear Tusi beads on my waist? Because, uh, because there are a lot of uh, this tiny uh, hair on on the neck, so I feel a little pain uh, when the hair is uh, uh, mingled, is uh, 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 together with the tusi tusi bead, the, the thread of the tusi beads. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't know. I never heard anybody do that before. Maybe you, what you could do, you don't, you don't have to wear the tosi beads tightly around your neck. You can keep them low. You can have them slack. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. The ne next one? Yeah. Mm, Shadow the last year. Shoot, you should have given us it. Hare Krishna, in my guru, Lao Shima, he can tell me Shao Guru's around the Indian Shimmy, the Lao Chu Dian. Shimon Guru, Jiang Yan, the Tang Shu Dian. 之前打扫的宫地城庙与宫地皇后有没有关系呢？我，呃，哈利·皮什纳·贝斯·朱古兰，All uh, teachers today I need Guru's mercy especially so that my spiritual life will be energetic. Uh, first question is that, what's the relationship with the Gundicha-Majuna? We and the relationship between the queen of uh, Gondi. The what? Uh, uh, this, uh, these days is uh, rather, rather natural. Yes. And, uh, What's the relationship between Gundicha Marjana and? Uh, what's the relationship? Uh, because the day before, yeah, yesterday is the day that we, the, the Gondicha temple was cleansed. And uh, what's the relationship between the, I'm translating literally because that's what she asked. Uh, what's the relationship between the uh, cream of Gondi and the, uh, Temple. Between the king of Puri? Queen. Queen. The queen of Puri. Gondi. That's what, what 
she's asking the question itself, thing like that. The Queen of Gundi? Yes. Maybe she's thinking that the, there is a queen preside over the Gundi temple. Yes, there is a, the, the, the Gundicha was the name of the queen. It was the name of the wife of the king. Maharaj Indra Jumna had a wife called Gundicha. So that was her temple. But yeah, and they, they bring the deities there, they stay there for a week. Gundicha also means a heart. So the cleaning of the heart is what's taking place when we do the cleaning of the Gundicha temple. It's also telling us that we have to clean the heart. Yes, if we clean the place, it's good. A devotee should clean the place. We should leave a place cleaner than it was before we came there. Yeah, devotee it cultivates the mode of goodness, and cleanliness is a quality of the mode of goodness. So you like to keep everything nice and clean, that's very good. So clean the heart. Keep your heart nice and clean. It's nice here. You want to clean everything around you. You clean the, everywhere you go, but you have to be clean yourself. Yes. Um, 
我今天就要去看望一个癌症晚期的长辈，他已经接受了 Krishna 音乐的机器。你不如指导我还能够做些什么？和这个灵魂建立信灵性的信任呢？感恩 Guru。The second question is that, uh, how can we strengthen our own faith in Guru and Scripture, and at the same time, uh, train ourselves to become um, useful tool so that the others will have faith in ourselves. Uh, when we share Baba Gita and Holy Name with them, because today I'm going to uh, we visit a superior uh, who is uh, at the terminal stage of cancer, and she had accepted the the chanting machine of Krishna. So, Guru, please instruct me. What should I? Uh, what more should can I do to have? to establish a spiritual trust with this soul. Hello. <laughs> well, just encourage, if she can, maybe you can read something to her. I don't know. It's difficult if she's if you say she's already accepted the chanting box and she's hearing the chanting of the holy name. Well, that's very wonderful, it's very, very good. Yeah, you, you can give her some nice prasada, you prepare some nice spiritual food, you can take some flowers offered to Krishna, then take them to her. You can also take a book like Bhagavad Gita and read a little bit to her. And maybe she can listen to some of the recordings of Prabhupada's lectures. Now, some many of Prabhupada's lectures have been translated, so she can also listen to these lectures, and she can get spiritual knowledge. Listens to Maharaj and the host and all devotees. Mm, is there uh, is there a degradation of love uh, from Vrindavan, Dwarka, Mathura, and and uh, Vaikuntha? Uh, so the element of the love for Krishna uh, is it the refused one after another? Yes. The love of Vrindavan is the greatest. And then after Vrindavan we say we say sometimes we say Krishna is perfect in Dwarka and Krishna is more perfect in Mathura and Krishna is most perfect in Vrindavan. Krishna 
完美的，在马库拉的奎什纳是更加完美的，而在文达人的奎什纳是最完美的。So there is a degradation of that. The love is, is, is much higher in Vrindavan. It's a little down in Mathura. It's a further down in Dwarka. And then Vaikuntha is further down. And then come to Lord Shiva and then material world. In Vrindavan, the love is Yes. Okay. Go on. Go Gokula is Gokula is the Vrindavan in the material world. Gokula is the Vrindavan. Yeah, Gokula is on is in Boma, Boma Vrindavan. It's in the it is it's in this material world on this planet. Hare Krishna, blessed gurus, lotus feet, and all devotees. My question is that what's the difference, distinction with uh, mental speculation and uh, speculation based on the scripture? Well, there's a big difference. The difference is that you, your mental speculation, it's all based on your mind, what you're thinking in your mind. But men, speculation based on the scriptures were dis, guided by the information in the scriptures. We we want to we don't speculate just on the basis of our mind. Our mind is full of so many mundane thoughts and material desires, mundane knowledge. But the scriptures is absolute knowledge. So we have to understand the scriptures. We have to understand the philosophy of the scriptures and then think how to apply this philosophy and how to understand it correctly. Prabhupada gave the example, he said, just like in the scriptures, it said, Krishna says, I am the taste in water. So you have to think, guided by scripture, how is it Krishna is the taste in water? Krishna在用如何 
So you can consider, well, Krishna is everywhere, he's in every atom, and so he's in the atoms of the water, and he, by Krishna's own transcendental arrangement, he arranges for the very special taste to be in the water. And the scriptures also tell us that Krishna is the active principle in everything. So the active principle in water is taste. Therefore, the taste is, is, is due to Krishna. So, so we want to be guided by scriptures. Not just simply think in your mind, but think what the scriptures say. And everything you decide should be with the support of evidence from scriptures. Please accept my humble obeisances as Guru Dev. Lord Vishnu is present in Shita Dwipa in the material world. How about Shita Dwipa in the spiritual world? Is Lord Krishna present there or Vishnu Tattva? Uh, Yoga Yogita Sham. Krishna is there in the spiritual world. Krishna we said Krishna is there, he's a cowherd boy and he's playing the flute. This is the special features of, gold, of Sweta Dweep in the spiritual world. Because that Sweta Dweep is actually Goloka. Lord Brahma just took the name Sweta Dweep to give it for Goloka. Go ahead. Before Lord Brahma saw small Krishna in Vrindavan, uh, haven't he, uh, he ever seen small Krishna? the form of small Krishna in Vaikuntha? 
or Lord Brahma ha have so seen this form, but uh, uh, when he came to Vrindavan in the earth, he has forgotten. Well, he wanted to understand. Remember, he saw Krishna in the forest of Vrindavan with the cowherd boys and they were sitting together eating their food. So he wanted to see some more, he wanted to see some of the powers of Krishna. Not that he forgot, he just wanted to see some more of Krishna's powers. He wanted to try to understand how powerful Krishna is. Krishna在本大文的森林当中，和那些男孩子们在一起做席地而坐，在吃东西。主Brahma都就就想看到更多的情景，他想见证到Krishna的力量，而并非他忘，并不是他忘记了，只是想他他想要看到Krishna更多的
So you follow the procedure. Okay, Obeisance to Guru Maharaj. In which district uh, does Yamuna River located? Locate? Well, the Yamuna River flows from the Himalayas and it flows right down the Himalayas and it comes right through many districts. Shaska, in the spiritual world, where does uh, Yamuna River located? In the spiritual uh, world? Yes. And what's, her, what's uh, the relationship in relationship between Yamuna and Krishna? Uh, 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 what, what ras um, does the relationship between Yamuna and Krishna belong to? Uh, I don't know. I don't know these ans the answers to these questions. I might be able to find out, but I don't know immediately. Mm -hmm. Does Astanga Yoga belong to the category of Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga? No. How does uh, Astanga Yoga, how does one situated in, the, in Astanga, practice in Astanga Yoga elevated to the level of Bhakti Yoga, uh, should, uh, should we work from Astanga Yoga to Bhakti Yoga? No, you don't have to work from Astanga Yoga to Bhakti Yoga. You can immediately begin Bhakti Yoga. And how do you get from how do you get from Astanga Yoga, Babu Yuja to 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 Bhakti Yoga? You need to get the association of a devotee. A devotee will, has to instruct you. Or, or another way in which you can come from Bab, uh, Baba Yuja, Asanga Yoga, you can come to Bhakti Yoga, that when you get to Samadhi, you may realize the Supreme Lord in your heart, and you realize that you're the servant of the Supreme Lord, and then you will think about, you want to serve the Lord, and so then you will start to do devotional service. Uh 
Yes. Okay. Bhagavad Gita's perennial perennial knowledge. It means it's been here for a very, very long time. And we know from the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to the sun god Vibhishvan. So that was millions of years ago. And Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita just now in some other universe. So Bhagavad Gita is eternal knowledge. Yes. Bhagavad Gita is from the Mahabharata. And Mahabharata is Smriti, it's not Shruti. The four Vedas are Shruti. It has to be from the four Vedas to be Shruti. So the Upanishads, Upanishads are Shruti. So sometimes Bhagavad Gita is called Gita Upanishad. So it appears like it's one of the Upanishads, but actually it's uh, Smriti. So some people, they won't accept the Bhagavad Gita because it's Smriti. They only, some people only accept Shruti. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, the Guru and our devotees 
in the Vandava Nila, why Krishna arranges uh, Radharani married Abhimanyu and not uh, arrange Radharani to marry himself? Um, because Purnamasi, Purnamasi is the, she's the one who arranges the marriages. And she said, no, no, Krishna and Radharani, they, they're not for marriage. I said, Krishna and Radharani, they have a special relationship, but not for marriage, not good for their marriage. Mm. The the standard is you have to be recommended and the stand another stand you have to also be five years practicing devotional service that you've been from uh, I think from the first initiation you waited five years to get second initiation and you have to be studying the scriptures. Now, many people nowadays, they want you to do Bhakti Shastri before you get second initiation. So after the f five years after the first initiation, yeah. Uh, that means he only got one initiation. He 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 uh, yeah, who, who knows? Yes. Right? Who's, who's to decide who's got the qualification? Does the guru decide or does the... Well, there should be recommendation coming from the senior devotee. And you have to be ready to chant more mantras. That means you have to be very faithfully chanting at least 16 rounds every day. Because when you get second initiation, then you're going to get more mantras to chant. So if you cannot chant 16 rounds every day, then you won't need second initiation. 那一个人呢他自己要做好了已经做好了充分的准备了因为二次起立之后呢就需要念诵更多的mantra and because every Gayatri mantra you have to chant, not, not one mantra, you have to chant 70 mantras. And you have to chant three times a day, so that's another 210 mantras. Mm, 
So if you cannot chant six, 16 rounds, then you will never chant the Gayatri Mantra. Yes. How you want to Dear Gita, Devadasi, Hare Krishna, Gurmar and devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, our social prophet, thank you for your mercy. One lady gave me some incense from Sai Baba Ashram and a little figure of Ganesh, and she asked me to give it to you, Maharaj. What should what shall I do with them? Shall I wait till somebody from here goes to Mapur and bring it to Guru Maharaj? Sorry for asking a question not relating spiritual advancement. Yes, you, you can just keep it until a suitable time to send it to me. It's not urgent. Shall I trust? It's not urgent. Shall I translate it? No, just go ahead. Okay. Okay. Because this is not related to our class. Let's look at the next question. S. This devotee uh, uh, continued with the cl uh, clarified the question. Dear Guru, because uh, it's broken, I haven't heard it clearly. Is Upanishad uh, belong? Yes, the 100... Uh, it, it, 108 Upanishads are all, they're all from the Vedas, so they're Shruti. Sometimes the Bhagavad Gita is called the Gita Upanishad, but it's not Shruti. But the Upanishads, they're Shruti. Ishopanishad is Shruti. Go ahead. That's uh, the end of the day's question. Oh, okay. So, Bama Ganshi, Sorry to Function, LinkedIn, Ganshi, Guru Mani, Gewam and Jantai, the Fun E, Ganshi, Sorry to Function, T1, Jufu Niman. Shangha Kwaila, Ju Shinti, Dobao Jong, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Ganshi Guru Mani, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I couldn't have been for your team. I'm very, very grateful. I'm very happy to be here. 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 I'm very happy to be